Hey everyone, today we're going to do a little Java video and I'm going to talk about JVM memory in Java. So I think this is a pretty important topic to learn about because as you probably know, Java is a garbage collected language and what that means is you really only have indirect control over memory usage. So you can create objects but you can't specifically deallocate anything and specifically allocate memory. Um, you're kind of letting the garbage collector handle that and the JVM handle all of that for you. So it really helps to understand the different parts and where you can run into trouble. I have this kind of cool diagram that I found at uh, Java Honk, I guess. And um, what it does is it just shows you there's a difference between heap memory and non-heap memory. And what the heap memory is, is that's generally where all of your application memory is going to be used. So when you create new objects, they go into this part called the Eden space. And that's for new objects that have just been created and allocated. And then once the garbage collector runs, a lot of times those objects are very quickly destroyed because they're only temporary. Um, but if they survive, they go into something called survivor space. And then if they survive through the survivor space for a long time, they become what you would call a tenured object. And those are just really old objects that are living in your applications, um, your, your process memory. And if you actually do something like a heap dump, you can take a look at your really old objects and, and you can kind of get a feel for what's in there. So all kinds of uh, different, if different parts, but it's really all the same part. It's just your working memory of your application. Um, on the other side, you have specifically this non-heap memory. And permgen is an interesting thing. That's, that's, what is, uh, that's what composes your class definitions and your method definitions. So when you load classes, they'll go into permgen. And then there's another part that's non-heap, which is your um, stack memory. And so each thread in Java it has its own execution context, and it has its own stack, and that stack memory is separate. And you can actually set how much memory each stack has. And when you do something like call a big recursive method, and it, um, it calls itself a whole bunch of times, you might get something called a stack overflow, which is where you used up all the memory on that stack, that thread stack. So you could actually set that if you want to have a super huge um, stack size. So this, is, this diagram is also kind of cool because it shows this dash XMX, which is the max heap size JVM argument setting. And then there's dash XMS, which is the um, initial heap size argument setting. And one optimization that you can do for your application, and we really shouldn't do that many ap uh, optimizations for your memory for your application, but one you can do is set XMS and XMS to be equal so that your application uh, initially just um, pre-allocates all of the memory so that it doesn't have to do that dynamically later. Um, so let's, ju let's jump into this little uh, example I have. And what it's going to do is just allocate a really big array and it's going to sleep and we're going to watch the memory get allocated. And what I have here is a run configuration where I'm setting the argument and this is the VM argument. We're going to set it to two gigabytes. That's that XMX. This is the max heap size. So this is heap size we're setting, max heap size, and that's two gigabytes. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this application now, and it's going to say type something to continue. I just have this as a scanner, so it can just sit here for a minute. And I'm going to run something else called JConsole. In JConsole, it's a binary. It's in um, It'll come with your JDK distribution, but it'll be in the bin in that JDK distribution. And we're just gonna run JConsole. It's just a little application and it lets you connect to a running Java process. And I made this, this uh, Java process called allocating arrays. And we're gonna hit connect. And I'm gonna say, yeah, sure, insecure connection. And so I connected directly to it and it's kind of cool. It shows me exactly how much memory I'm using. I've got um, a heap of about 19 megabytes allocated. And I've got a few threads running. It's not using much CPU. It's just kind of hanging there on that, on that uh, scanner. So I'm just gonna do like whatever. And then it's gonna start allocating and then sleeping. So it just allocated a huge array. And you're gonna watch this go to about exactly a gigabyte. And it's sleeping for 60 seconds. So now we just watched this application start up allocate a gig and then now it's sleeping 
and you can see it's kind of interesting I didn't deallocate this even though I set inst to null so what's happening here is is giga is 10 to the ninth right and an integer in Java is 32 bits so that's four bytes so 10 to the ninth divided by four is about a gig right so that's our two allocate and we allocated that many integers so we should have allocated exactly about a gig which we did I think we we're already using about 19 or 20 megs to start with so we allocated just about exactly a gigabyte and you can see our use is exactly a gig um, cool thing we can do here is I can perform a garbage collection so and it's gonna go ahead and garbage collect here okay so it lost the connection that's because this only slept for 60 seconds so we're gonna restart this let's restart this application and uh, I have to kill this and we'll see allocating arrays is now running so we're gonna reconnect to this new process whoops something happened so I'm just gonna kill J console and restart J console okay there we go so we're gonna reconnect yes and secure connection um, everything looks good we've got about 19 megs allocated I'm gonna hit I'm gonna just type whatever hit enter it's gonna start allocating you're gonna see the memory shoot up to about a gig as we did before so it's gonna sit here and then what's what's interesting is it didn't garbage collect it but I can manually perform a garbage collection so I'm gonna click this perform garbage collection and it'll free that up immediately because it knows I set that and I set these integers to null so uh, it, it knows they're not referenced anymore and it can go ahead and garbage collect so that's kinda cool uh, but you can see it didn't do it automatically and what it would have done it would have waited until that function returned off the stack and then it would have run the garbage collector at some later period of time and you can see our max heap is two gigs so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kill this process stop it and we're gonna kill this just kill J console um, let's see what happens if we drop the memory a little bit um, we're gonna change this we're gonna change this is in VM arguments we're gonna change it to one gig and what should happen is the application should blow up because I think we're going to use more than a gig since there's some overhead in the heap of just out of just building up this uh, general application and allocating a scanner and everything so I'm just gonna type okay and then immediately we're gonna get an out of memory error so you can see our heap had a little bit on it already with this allocating a scanner and everything and then we when we tried to allocate one gigabyte of memory our application immediately blew up because that's all we had we only had one gig allowed to it so that's kind of just a really brief overview and um, there's a difference between major garbage collections and minor garbage collections in general you can think of a minor as just going through and um, cleaning up the heap space and a major is what people call a stop the world garbage collection and that'll pause the entire execution of your process and clean up everything in the memory and you kind of don't want to do that very often so because it's going to pause the execution of your process but I believe when we clicked that uh, garbage collect now that button on J console I believe that was a full garbage collection because it even pulled out we started with 23 megs plus a gig and then it brought us down to 8 megs total so there are a couple rules there's a couple good rules of thumb about garbage collection and I I have some links here just for for Oracle uh, their hotspot VM something about tuning some special options here and just general overviews so some some things I can just tell you right off the bat GC should never use more than about 10 percent of CPU on a JVM process if you are you're probably you're you probably are not giving enough memory and it's having to garbage collect way too much um, you also don't want to manually call a garbage collector uh, the um, the hotspot VM the one that Oracle makes it is what you would call a self tuning uh, garbage collector so you really don't want to mess with it you want it to help you want it to take care of itself and that's another reason why they say you have all of these options here but you really don't want to be setting these 
you can maybe change the garbage collector. So there's a there's another one called the G1 garbage collector, which is built for servers specifically. But you really don't want to be messing with a lot of these options. You just want to give it more heap space, and then the hotspot VM should automatically figure out how much to give young generation, how much to give old generation, and that kind of thing. And um, there are some other rules of thumb that are interesting, like object pools. It used to be that people made object pools so they didn't have to reallocate objects. Um, actually, it's very cheap to allocate objects now, and making object pools confuses the garbage collector, so you don't want to do that. And um, in general, just not allocating an object is the best optimization. So this was just my quick uh, overview of garbage collection. I'm going to put all these links in the video and um, throw this cool little diagram here just showing the different parts of JVM memory. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.